Number one. I've been listening to narratives of these stories, so I thought I'd check them out and share a story. It's maybe not as scary as some of the others, but it was to me. This happened about 18 months ago in winter, and we were due a snowstorm the day after. I knew the snow was coming, and being a mom I decided I needed a few things before it hit, because I wouldn't get the car off the drive if I left it until the day after. It was around 4 p.m., so starting to get dark and just about to snow. I told my partner I was going out for a few things. We had a disagreement. He thought I shouldn't go in case I got stuck in the snow. I went anyway and the snow started falling soon after I left on my 10 minute journey. I pulled up on the town center car park, which is located behind a few large buildings out of sight of the main shopping area. It is usually a busy town and there are usually a few people walking through the car park in the center, but not today. I got what I needed and started to make my way back to the car in less than half an hour. I'm usually really vigilant as I'm only 5 feet tall, of slim build, and not a really a challenge to an attacker. But it was getting cold as the snow got heavier and started falling faster. So with my bags in hand I struggled to fasten my coat, pull on my scarf, and dig out my gloves to put on. I hurried as much as I could in the snow, through the town, past the market hall, through an empty precinct past the large buildings of the car park as I was dressing for the cold. I always take notice of people that I pass and there were very few. After I had passed the market hall I got the feeling I was being followed. I tend to not care if people think I'm paranoid and always look behind me. It's always better to be safe than sorry. So I looked behind me. There was a man around 5 feet 8, average build, red hair, gray hoodie, blue jeans and scruffy white trainers. So I slowed down because I was still close enough to the market for someone to hear me. But there wasn't enough space between the market and the car park for me to slow, enough before I reached the car park. I looked again and sure enough he was still there, but closer. Got to the gate of the car park. It's not really a gate, more an opening about six feet wide. So I decided to leave him a wide gap to the right of me. Behind and to the left of me, within shouting distance, there is usually a busy taxi rank. So I looked around to see if anyone was there for my safety. There were no taxis, and in an instant, the guy behind me squeezed through the small gap on my left. There was no reason for him to get so close. He had been behind me to the right until this moment. Needless to say, that shook me up and I just stopped on the spot. My car on its own was just left, but I couldn't run in the snow, and he could have easily got there before me. I very slowly started to walk in the direction of my car, and he just slowed right down. He kept looking back at me and started walking to the left of my car, the same way I was. So I stopped to see what he would do. I ducked behind another parked car and stopped too and scanned in my direction. I managed to hide long enough for him to get fed up looking and he walked to the other end. I slowly walked towards my car using the other cars to hide. I threw myself in the car and locked the doors. I drove the long way out of the car park to see if I could see him as I was now protected by my car. As I drove along the road towards the traffic lights, there he was, walking back in the direction he had just come from. I tried to get a picture of him, but my stupid phone decided not to work. After arriving home, I told my partner. I asked him if I should report him, or was I just being paranoid? He went one step further and said he wanted to go look for him. We went back to the town center, but no signs of this man. I reported him and his description to a local traffic warden, who passed it on to the local community safety and police. Hopefully he didn't get a chance to scare anyone else, or maybe something worse. Number 2. So I realize there are a lot of stories of people being followed home by some creepy guy or something along those lines. I never thought something like that would happen to me in a small town I live in. But danger lurks around every corner, I guess. Sorry, getting off track, but here's the story. I go to a school that is not very far from my home, about a mile away, so sometimes I have to walk home. Just to explain quick what my route is, I take a road that stretches really far and passes by a neighborhood, emphasis on passes by. 
The then curves down another little stretch towards a big hill that turns into my neighborhood. Some people jump to the given chance to walk. I, however, am a typically lazy person. Even though I was dreading the walk ahead of me, my friend who was also my crush offered to go with me. Note that I am a 16-year-old male and really small for my age, though I can handle myself in a fight. Since my crush was tagging along for some of the walk, I stopped dreading over it and got really excited. So we start off on our merry way. We chatted and just all around ignored the world around us. We made jokes talking about maybe hanging out sometime, but it was short-lived since she had to turn and walk towards her house. So on my own, I walked a little bit more. I was about halfway through the trek when I spotted a really creepy old guy tailing me. He wasn't making me too nervous, but I kept my eye on him. I then went over a hill and lost visual on him. I don't want to sound paranoid, but I grabbed a rock on the side of the road, just in case this guy made a move on me. When he got over the hill, he was much closer, so I kept my guard up. So I made it to the turn on the road, and out of the corner of my eye, this guy's running at me. I flip out and start sprinting. I was a little too slow when he grabbed my arm. Luckily, not the one with the concealed rock. I then proceeded to smash the rock into his face as hard as I could. I broke free and ran. I looked behind me and the guy was staring at me with this devilish look. This look I will never, ever forget. I ran the last half mile and made it home safely. My dad was home when I barged into my house and slammed the door. He ran up to me and asked what was wrong. I never spoke to him or anyone about this incident. This took place a couple months ago. I really hope I never meet that guy again. Number three. Something really freaky happened when I was about 12. I was sleeping on the couch in the front room when someone woke me up by knocking on the door. I was going to answer it, but my mom beat me to it. She asked who it was and a male responded, saying that his car had broken down and he needed to use our phone. My mom refused to let him in and told him to use the pay phone next door. We heard him take a couple of steps and then stop. Our driveway was all gravel and we could hear that he was just a few feet away. Crunch, crunch, and he was back on the porch saying that the payphone was out of order. My mom said that she would call someone for him, but he declined. We were both freaked out by then, and when the dogs out back started going apeshit, my mom called the police. They arrived fairly quickly, but only shined their light around before leaving. The dogs settled down and I fell back to sleep but I don't think my mother did. The next morning, the police came back and wanted a description of the guy. It turns out that he went down the road a few miles and using the same ploy, got an elderly couple to let him in. He beat both of them, killing the wife and sending her husband to the hospital. No robbery, just brutality. The cops left and life settled back to normal, with one exception. The dogs were now inside animals. As for that guy... They never found out who he was. Number four. I'm new to Reddit and this is my first post. I've been reading a lot of these and wanted to share my and my brother's scary encounter with a black truck. I'll talk about my brother's encounter first. My brother was 16 or 17 at the time. We were both pretty bad kids who liked to get into trouble because we both snuck out a lot. So when my parents went to sleep one night, my brother snuck out to his friend's house to go drink. A couple hours pass and it's 3 a.m. And my brother's on his way home, completely wasted, still holding the bottle of vodka as he walks. The town I live in is pretty safe. We weren't afraid to go out at night alone. As my brother is walking home, a big black lifted truck speeds and violently pulls over, stops next to my brother. As my brother is wasted and confused, he stops for a second. The windows roll down and the black door opens fast. Inside are three white men, fairly young with shaved heads. The one in the back screams, Get the fuck in! My brother takes off sprinting, still clutching the bottle of vodka. The truck is speeding after him. My brother then climbs the fence to try and lose them, but they ended up knowing where the other side of the fence led to. My brother is still sprinting, and he gets onto our street. The black truck is still following him, but not at a slow pace. They were speeding after him. 
My brother got to our house and is too drunk to think about them coming up to our house. Fortunately, he left the door unlocked, so he ran inside and locked the door. The guys in the truck saw what house that he ran to and came to my brother's window, which is the only window that is located in the front yard. They started banging on the window and screaming for my brother to let them in. My brother was too scared to call the police because he was underage and drunk, and our parents would have beat his ass. Eventually, the men left. I also had an encounter with a large, lifted black truck. I was 13 when this happened. I snuck out of my house one night to go hang out with my friends and drink. The way that I used to sneak out, instead of using the front door like my brother, I was too paranoid that my parents would hear the front door squeak. So I would take my window pane out, leave through my window, which was in the backyard, climb my side gate, which was a good 9 feet tall. It was a lot harder to climb back over the gate to get back inside, because I had no leverage from the front of the gate. So as I leave, it's two miles to my friend's house. Everything was normal at first. Although it was a 13-year-old girl wearing a hoodie and shorts, I felt pretty safe at 1 a.m. alone. I go to my friend's house and drink, and around 3 a.m. I start my way home. As I'm walking up a main street to get home, a large lifted black truck drives by me. Nothing weird. Then I notice it do a U-turn and drive back to me. I thought that was weird. I was so spooked. It does a third U-turn to start going the same way I'm going, and then speeds up and hits a post office mailbox on the side of the street and dents it. I'm kind of freaked out at this point. The truck does a donut in the street and then proceeds to come at me as it speeds up. I noticed and I started sprinting. I turn onto my street and the truck is still following me. I have large bushes outside my house. Once I got to my house, I dove into them and kept an eye out. Everything is quiet until I hear an engine creeping up slowly. I see the truck from the bushes. I'm about to pee myself because this usually doesn't happen where I live and I was too scared to call the cops because I wanted to avoid the wrath of my parents. The truck stops at my house and idles for a good 30 seconds and then drives away. After that, we both stopped sneaking out. We didn't tell each other about the incident until years later. It's scary to think that these guys that almost kidnapped my brother and chased me down know where we live. We both had no idea what they wanted. Number 5. My house has these huge windows in front of a wooden table in my living room. You could be walking by and see clearly into my house through these windows. When I was around 5 or 6, I would sit at the table and draw. I loved drawing, and I still do. That was my favorite place to draw since there was perfect lighting and a lots of birds outside for me to doodle on to a piece of scratch paper. In my area, there were lots of ice cream men walking with those portable ice cream stands. These men's would sell those Spongebob or Sonic ice creams. I began seeing this short ice cream man always walking in front of my house, and he would just stare at me. Almost every day, he would walk around my block and just stare at me. I tried to ignore him and look away, but I felt him looking at me through the window. Remember, I was five or six, so I never told my parents about this. One day, I was once again sitting at the table drawing, when I looked outside and he was standing there, smiling. This wasn't a friendly smile that you would give a child. I was able to see his gums and all of his front teeth. His eyes were wide. I saw the whites around his eyes. He made a motion for me to come outside and I heard him yell, Come on, I have some ice cream for you. If you come outside, I'll give you some. I was very shy at that age and didn't like talking to people outside my family. So I went to ask my parents, who were in another room, if I could come have some ice cream from the man. They fortunately said no, and when I went back to the table, he was gone. I haven't seen him since this incident. I sometimes wonder what would have happened if I didn't go ask my parents for permission and just went outside to him. Maybe I wouldn't be here typing this. So weird ice cream guy? You better pray we don't ever meet. Sinful here. Thanks for listening, guys. Please make sure to leave a like, comment, share, and most importantly, subscribe to The Sinful Society if you haven't already. Thanks for your time, all the supportive comments, guys. And um, keep your stories coming. They're great stories, and if I haven't got to yours yet, trust me, I will in the near future. 
And I want to thank you guys too for helping me get to just under 3,000 subscribers. Can't believe how far this channel's come. I'm so stoked to hit 5,000, 10,000, 100,000. The sky's the limit. Till we meet again, stay sinful.